Santiago Meza Lopez came from a humble background and had to begin working hard as the first child from a very young age. His story is quite unique with the numerous controversies surrounding it. However, there is one thing that is certain. He abetted the disappearance of a lot of people. After the inevitable division of the Guadalajara cartel, all drug trafficking plazas went their separate ways, and the unity that was once upheld by Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo crumbled to nothing but chaos. Miguel got himself arrested and war broke out between the plazas who had immediately formed their own unique identity. During this time, Mexico suffered from the temperaments of the warring cartels, where bodies were picked up almost every day on the streets, hanging from bridges with large warning banners and widespread panic. At this time, Santiago Meza Lopez was still a young farmer, tending to whatever jobs he could find. Like numerous young folks who did not have a choice, he got into the drug trade with the Ariano Felix cartel. He started out by merely taking care of horses and doing masonry work. Efren Perez and Jorge Oriano Felix El Macumba, the heads of the organization, afterwards invited him to see an experiment. They poured liters of water and other substances into a drum and asked Santiago Meza Lopez to drop in a leg of beef. They told him he should let it sit for two hours. Lopez recounted to authorities, move it and the meat dissolved. It was probably about six months later that they called me again and Efron told me that now they were going to experiment with human flesh. I'm going to send some guys to train with you. In other words, so that they learn the job. The first body was dissolved one night in 1996 in a drum with 200 liters of water. They undressed the victim, put him inside, turned on the gas burner and left it there all night. It left the water thick with foam. We put the barrels in the pickup and took them to throw them away in the canyon. It was still dark when we threw them in. Three months later, I did it again. I told him I didn't want to do it anymore. Santiago Meza Lopez is alleged to have disposed of at least 300 bodies over a decade. A Mexican military statement said, he is said to have dumped the bodies in graves, poured acid on them and let them dissolve underground, but he was heard telling journalists that he first put the bodies in a can or drum. The victims are believed to have been rivals of Teodoro Garcia Cimental, an alleged former lieutenant of the Ariano Felix cartel. The US Drug Enforcement Administration identified Garcia as one of 10 men who battled for control of drug trafficking routes to the US through Tijuana. The DEA said Garcia is the chief rival of alleged Ariano Felix cartel leader Fernando Sanchez Ariano. Mexican officials blamed the power struggle for a surge in violence in Tijuana, home of the Ariano Felix cartel. The Ariano Felix cartel rose to power in the 1980s. Since 2002, four brothers who led the cartel have been killed or arrested. Most recently, Eduardo Ariano Felix, who was captured in his Tijuana home. Mexico's drug violence surged and grew more vicious in recent years, particularly in the northern border cities of Tijuana and Ciudad Juarez, where people wake up almost every day to find mutilated bodies dumped in the streets. Years passed and Santiago Meza Lopez stuck with the job and did teach the method to others. In his statement, he explained that in one of the locations, he installed drainage where the dissolved human remains were dumped. It was the devil to move them, the human remains, because they weighed a lot. After everything was cleaned up, we stored the barrels. We also washed the drain with hot water because the remains stuck to the pipes, he recalled. Meza Lopez said he worked in the chicken coop himself for just a year and a half and that on some occasions military forces showed up, but never discovered anything. He said the cartel brought more than 70 bodies to that site to dissolve them in caustic soda. He described the chicken coop as a very rural place that was along the free highway to Tecate, a neighboring city of Tijuana. We called it the chicken coop because they raised chickens there. Soldiers and police paraded Meza before reporters at a cement block shack in the Tijuana suburb of Colonia El Refugio, where he allegedly disposed of his victims. They had him explain how he allegedly got rid of the bones, shouting at him to speak up whenever he mumbled. Meza, wearing a dirty white t-shirt and jeans when arrested, told reporters he got paid 600 US dollars a week for his work. He said he would apologize if he could speak to relatives of the victims. At the time when he was arrested, President Felipe Calderón's administration had already started referring to Meza as El Pozolero, which means the stew maker, in reference to the fact that he was believed to have dissolved some 300 people in caustic soda. 
In a press release distributed by the Attorney General's office on January 25, 2009, Meza Lopez was portrayed as one of the most ruthless drug traffickers in the game, and the official description of him suggested he'd be subjected to a severe sentence. Almost a decade later, the reality came quite different. Information obtained from the Federation of Judicial Power, which is in charge of imposing sentences in Mexico, revealed that to date Meza Lopez still hasn't been formally sentenced. Despite admitting to these horrible acts and being convicted of crimes. For now, he remains incarcerated in the Almaloya de Juarez prison in the state of Mexico, where he finished a primary school education and learned how to write. As can be read in his file, around mid-2015, a formal prison sentence was handed down due to Meza Lopez's involvement in organized crime and illegal deprivation of freedom. Nevertheless, in the northern part of the country, considered the farthest point from the capital, lay the border city of Tijuana, where human remains were all too often dug out of the earth, presumably those that were dissolved by Meza Lopez. They appeared every time it rained, every time the wind moved the soil, every time a group of family members of the disappeared showed up with a pickaxe and a shovel to look for the remains of their children, fathers, and grandsons. According to Fernando Oquegueda, president of the association United for the Disappeared, 16,500 liters of organic matter were extracted. The most important excavation made occurred in an area known as the Chicken Coop. The event came eight years from the day that Meza Lopez was detained, opening a new door for families of Mexico's disappeared. Authorities had informed families that DNA could not be extracted from the organic remains, but Fernando Oseguerda and other family members discovered new graves in the chicken coop, extracting 250 kilos of bones and bone fragments. Meza was eligible for parole later this year. Fernando Oseguerda noted, He still has a long wait in jail since he has yet to be sentenced for his clandestine acts against humanity, for his association with organized crime and for crimes against public health. He also will be sentenced for being in possession of a weapon meant for the army's use. Meza's connection to the Ariana Felix cartel grew so strong that at one time he controlled the flow of narcotics through Tijuana into the United States. He confessed to earning $600 per week to submerge cadavers in a tub filled with acid and sodium hydroxide while stirring the bodies for eight hours until everything but the teeth, nails, and some bone fragments dissolved. Meza said whatever remained would be burned before being buried in an empty lot on his property. His family members said Meza told them he would rather do this kind of work than have his children starved to death. After his arrest, investigators reportedly found anywhere from 14,000 to 15,000 remains buried in Meza's ranch. If you enjoyed the video, like and share with your friends. Also, subscribe and turn on post notifications so you don't miss out on other juicy stories.